hello everyone and welcome again to another video and today we are on our last day of hardware 2.0 because tomorrow I will be getting my full self drive computer upgrade as well as the MCU 2 upgrade now uh, just yesterday evening I got update 2020.36.3.1 it's not the latest one but maybe I might get the same uh, update on my uh, hardware 3 version and then this would be a very good test to compare both situations or both hardwares on the same software but before we dive into the video let me guys tell you about the new web shop that I've created so over the past few uh, months you have seen me wearing all kinds of testing the Tesla t-shirts and a couple of new designs I've been trying and testing a few of them, got some feedback from uh, friends and family but now, as of today, the web shop is actually live. Um, you can go to the web shop in the link below or in the description. I'll also put the link there so you can just click on that. Um, so again, thank you guys for your support and if you really want to support the channel, check out the website. And now, let's get back to the video. And as usual we start with the hill crest but here I have to interrupt because of the car being in the way and not the pilot not being able to maneuver around it yet but that's definitely going to be a case for full self-drive now let's accelerate to 70 kilometers an hour and see what the car does at the bottom of the hill here yeah that's still the same deviation as before so no change on that front now let's see here what the car does when uh, we're going on the downhill section and the left lane marking disappears so I'm not expecting much at the top here yep that's going that straight but what about here yeah it's moving to the side but correcting um, autopilot 2 is moving gradually to the side and then only at the end correcting this one was actually correcting rather quickly so yeah um, that could be an improvement we'll have to see in the next couple of updates all right the infamous s curve let's see if this version slows down before the turn nope 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 it's not slowing down and it is going over the line once again so that problem is still not fixed in this update And same here with this last turn it's uh, it's just going too much to the center the steering is too lazy to handle this s curve as it should and as it has done before right the s curve let's see will it slow down before the turn I don't think so because it's the exact same update but we'll see nope 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 it's not slowing down and I had to intervene there try to activate it again here for the last part it is taking quite a speed through the turn hmm it's going faster through the turns than my autopilot 2 was doing that's uh, interesting now let's see how this update handles the double exit will it still be as abrupt as the previous one or will it be more gradual as it also has done before so let's see what this first exit is 
yeah, that's rather abrupt. And again, that slight correction that it takes the exit in two different motions. Now let's see for the next exit, whether it will be also this abrupt. Oh yeah, whoa, <laughs> that was really abrupt on this one. So yeah, room for improvement there. Now I'm doing this at the exact same time as I did the test yesterday to get as close as possible the same lighting conditions and the same amount of sun, which is working out pretty well, um, just to limit the variables. And right here, we're going to see what the double exit taking is going to do for us. Is it going to be as abrupt or not? It's a little bit smoother and not so much into pieces. So it's not that it moves to the side and then it moves to the side again. Um, Let's see what it does here with this exit. Yeah, that's smoother. Oh, yeah, there was a slight correction. So that was the move in two parts. But the first part, when it was moving to the side, that was a little bit smoother and not as jerky as Autopilot 2.0. So I've got some room behind this car. Now let's see if I can trick the system into uh, the old truck issue. So I'm in the third lane, the truck is in the first lane. And when I want to move over, like right now. Yeah, the truck was moving into the first lane or into the second lane on the dash, but it didn't break for it. So let me try to do that again. No cars behind me, so I'm not hindering anyone. So here is the truck starting to move. It hesitates. Oh, yeah, now it's going back. Okay, so the issue is still there. Now, Elon has mentioned on Twitter that with the rewrite, then the all eight cameras will be mapped to one single image and then the overlap between cameras is uh, going to be eliminated. Um, so that is what I've been saying for quite some time. Probably the issue that the right fender camera is getting the truck into view and then it uh, yeah, gets a problem with it. Whoop. Yeah, now it didn't quite know what to do apparently and I had to touch the steering wheel to guide it a little bit more. Okay, so let's see if we can replicate it here again. So I'm moving to the side next to the truck. Yep, yep, that's a big correction here. So um, yeah, that's exactly the same in Autopilot 2.0 and in Autopilot 3.0. Now here we have another double exit. Let's see how it handles this one. Similar situation as before. Let's see if it's abrupt and whether it will go straight on until the end. Yeah, that's rather abrupt. Will it stay to the left? It doesn't quite know, but it's going to the right a little bit sooner. So it's taking the turn a little bit sooner, but oh, here it's going all the way to the outside of the turn before slowing down. Slight improvement on the beginning of that turn, but then, yeah, it messed up near the end. Now let's see if it takes this exit here, or we will get another issue. Yeah, it wants to, but then again, high curvature detected, and it doesn't want to do it at all. That used to work at a certain point as well, and rather well, actually. Um, I don't know why it's not working anymore at the moment. And I'm curious to see how the car will react in this case. So will it 
actually go oh that was smoother so the exit taking seems to be a little bit smoother than with autopilot 2.0 what is it going to do we're already going pretty slow so uh, still is going to the outside of the curve but um, yeah it seems to be a little bit better in that exit now let's see if it will take the second exit yes or no So the second exit starts in the turn here and will it do that or not? Autopilot 2.0 with this update refused to do it. It's going, it's going and it's aborting. I had to intervene there because it was going back to the left lane and there's a car behind me so I was not able to let the car do its thing. So it seems to be a little bit better but still some work to be done. Yeah, just turn green. So hopefully the truck in front of me picks up enough speed so I can take it at full speed. Nope, it's going to be a little bit slower than usual. A lot slower than usual. Wow, that's one slow ass truck. So I'm already autopilot. Let's accelerate to 70 and see what it does with the lane shift. Oh wow, that is quite a bit smoother than the previous hardware. It's taking the inside twice, almost, uh, which is how I would take it if I drive manually. That is for me a big improvement. I didn't see that one coming. It's only a small test point, but still this update, yep, I like it. Or this hardware, I like it, I should say. And we end with our usual final test where the lane lines disappear altogether. The pilot can be activated, so here we go. Sticking nice to the right side, I was about to say. Now it's going to the center, going to the left side. Oh, and aborting, aborting. Wow, that's a new one. Okay. So it didn't want to continue and somehow, I think, it knew it was on the wrong side of the road and just aborted altogether. Right, let's see if we can activate autopilot there. Let's wait for the car. Okay, here we go. Sticking to the right, that's good. Going to the left. Going to the left, staying in the middle, going towards that kid. No, that was not the intention. So a little bit different behavior, but not that much of a difference. Still a lot of work before we can use autopilot on streets such as these. Okay, so time for the big conclusion. What do I think about the Hardware 3 versus Hardware 2? Now I've been testing with the same version, which does not yet stop for the traffic lights uh, and roundabouts and all that kind of stuff. So, But it was exactly the same version as I had with Autopilot 2. So I had the same car, the same road, the same weather conditions, the same software, just the different hardware which was, I think, an excellent test to see what the real difference is between Hardware 3 and Hardware 2. Now, the difference is not that visible in the video uh, because it still fails at the S-curve, it still fails at the last test point where the lines all disappear. However, um, Hardware 3 feels to me, now I've been driving it for a couple of uh, days already, it feels to me 
a lot smoother it's it's not yet buttery smooth but it is a lot smoother so for example when you take the exit it's not as abrupt a change it's more gradual like it was on autopilot 2 a couple of updates ago but now it's just uh, on autopilot 3 or on hardware 3 i should say um, what else the uh, lane shift that was something that surprised me actually the most in the difference um, because with uh, hardware 2 it's not really moving to the inside of uh, of the turn or of the lane shift it is trying to follow a little bit more into the center uh, right now with hardware 3 it just drives the way I want to take it and uh, yeah that's a lot smoother a lot less motion in the car itself yeah, also when I'm uh, driving into a uh, turn then it feels like it's a lot smoother and the steering is not as intrusive if that's a good word to, to put it there's a lot less steering motion required it's a lot more subtle that it uh, drives instead of with autopilot 2 or hardware 2 it was taking and I'm exaggerating was taking more like straight points and then each and every time uh, adjusting it so that feels a lot smoother might have to do probably will have to do with the fact that hardware 3 has like yeah an order of magnitude more frame rates that it can process uh, in the same amount of time so it should react a lot faster and the correction should be a lot slower or a lot um, smaller the same goes for the automatic lane changes uh, they seem to be a little bit smoother it's not that big of a difference but driving it back to back um, it, it feels a little bit smoother when the lane change happens you still have the issue with the trucks uh, when you move over from the third lane to the second lane and there's a truck in the first lane then it still thinks it's there but as I said before Elon promised us that that would be um, fixed when they have the rewrite where all eight cameras around the car will generate one single image a 360 view and that will uh, eliminate those overlaps and then the last part is also when uh, it moves over in the lane to pass a truck um, it is less aggressive and more fluent when it does it compared to hardware 2.0 so again, the bottom line here is that hardware 3, it doesn't really show in capabilities, but the feeling of driving this way with hardware 3 is different and a lot smoother, which gives me a little bit more confidence in the ability of the car. It's not, sometimes with Autopilot 2.0, I get more like it's, it's the car is panicking. Right now, I get more the confidence that, yeah, the car has seen it and uh, I think that's a good thing and it's a different feeling for me having tested autopilot 2.0 for so long and so many times for me it's a different feeling driving in uh, this car with hardware 3.0 uh, and I get a bit more confidence in the system now I'm waiting on the update that allows me to stop for traffic lights and roundabouts and that kind of stuff and I will test that as soon as I get that update as well but uh, yeah it looks uh, promising and I'm glad to be on this hardware version so that I can actually uh, test a lot more things and the testing will go a lot more smoother hopefully in the future when the newer updates are coming out specifically geared towards hardware 3 so there you have it hope you enjoyed this comparison video I certainly did because I found it really interesting to see what the same software does with the different hardware but on the exact same car so with the exact same camera position and camera calibration and everything so uh, yeah I'm really looking forward to the new updates and as usual if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe using that button down there and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.